I sort of got a foul outlook on this episode today, but hey, it's in a good way. What am I talking about? Chicken enchiladas. Ooh, so good with cream cheese in there. Zesty green chili bite to it, all wrapped up in a homemade tortilla. Come on, the cheese is melting and I ain't waiting. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by another episode of Cowboy Cooking. And whoo-wee, I'd be liking this one. I ain't had it in a long time, so I look forward to making this. What are we talking about? Green chili chicken cheese enchiladas. Now, the reason I really like this dish and I want to share it with y'all, me and Shannon had been out there on the Bale Ranch, and the whole deal was five weeks long. And we'd been in about three weeks, and the assistant foreman and his wife, Old Rim and Stormy, we was breaking camp one day, coming by headquarters, and we got the best news of all. What was it? No, we didn't win the lottery. Somebody was going to cook our supper. Ooh, that was a treat for us. And what did Old Stormy fix? These green chili chicken cheesy enchiladas. Ooh, man, they are good. What makes them so good? Well, first of all, we're using two kinds of chicken, that white breast meat and a big old bone-in thigh. And when you blend them two together, you get so much more flavor out of this dish. But guess what? We putting cream cheese in it. Yeah, you heard me right. This is some cheesy goodness. The people in Wisconsin are raising it up right now. They be liking this deal because it has got some cheese in it. But guess what? Y'all know it's coming, you do. Hatch green chilies, roasted fresh off the fire and put in there for a little kick. But the cheesy goodness and the tender chicken and what are we wrapping it up in? Uh -oh. No, ain't no store-bought tortillas here. Don't let this fool you. This ain't a shopping cart dance. This is a rolling pin extravaganza because we are making homemade tortillas. Yep, and Shannon will have you a link to where you can find them. So let's get after it. Well, remember I was telling you about two kinds of chicken? I'm talking about some breast meat and some big old bone-in thighs. So let's talk about this chicken. You seen me take them out of there, two big old breasts, two big old thighs. Thighs had skin on them. I like to leave that there. It's gonna save me some flavor and some juices. Take some Red River Ranch, sprinkle it really good on both sides. Make sure, pat it in there. Preheated the oven to 350 degrees with it, and we're gonna cook it in this nine by 13 casserole dish with what? A half a cup of chicken broth. Yeah, it goes in there first. Place your breast in there, slip it in that oven, one hour. Then we're gonna pull it out. I want you to check it. Slice it down through there, pull it around there where you can make sure that chicken is cooked all the way through. Now, a lot of folks, when you order this at a restaurant, a chicken enchilada, there's big, long, stringy pieces of meat. I like to shred it too, but then I like to chop it to where everything is in a bite size. When you cut through that tortilla, it all stays together instead of pulling out something from down there in the back 40. So let's go ahead and get this chicken out. It is cooled thoroughly well, it has. And you can do it with a fork. You can do it with your hands. It is cooled off and you can see that chicken is tender and done all the way through. We may not even have to chop it, but you can see that Red River Ranch seasoning right there on top done its job. So just make sure that it's in tender, good bite-sized pieces. Well, we got it all pulled apart there, but see, this is what I might be talking about. Was you in the restaurant? Sure, I could eat that, ain't nothing wrong with it. But when you cut through there, that might pull out that, out of that one bite, and guess what would happen? The next bite might not have enough chicken in it, and then you'd be disappointed. So what we're gonna do? That would be foul. Yes, it would be <laughs> foul. Very well put, Shan. We're gonna come back up in here and chop this just a tad. Cause I want everything to be in a good bite-sized piece. And you can see that Dookie has got a foul outlook on life today. He's wanting some chicken. Do you need to sample just a little bite all by yourself? Wait, wait, get up here and a boy. Dancer. Good job. Well, it is all chopped up in a good bite-sized piece, so let me put it over here in this bowl. We'll seal it up to where the pups can't get it, and I'll meet y'all at the fire. Well, you see me break this field out, put a tablespoon of butter in there, let it melt. Then I took me one of them big, large yellow onions, and I diced it up really good. I did chunked it right in there, and we're going to cook these onions until they are good and tender. Won't take long, but we'll get her done. Well, them onions have got soft they are. Old Christine has done her job. Now we're gonna add us a half a cup of cow juice. Cow juice, you don't know what that is? Comes from the cow juice place it is. It's a half a cup. We gotta let this warm thoroughly and you can see that their skillet is hot. 
In the recipe, it says slide over to medium low heat. When you're cooking with fire, sometimes it's hard to find that. But we're gonna let that warm plumb through, everything good. And then guess what's coming next? Remember I told you there was some cheesy goodness coming along down the trail it was? A softened block of eight ounces of cream cheese. Now you wanna make sure you stay over on that medium low heat for this and you gotta be stirring all the time to get this incorporated in there well and get it good and smooth and silky like Frank Sinatra when he would sing that song. Fly me to the moon, let me catch a falling star. Oh, go back to cooking. We'll just cook this till it gets smooth again, incorporated with that milk and the onions. As my friend Bruno Mars would say, if you're gonna show up, you better show out smoother than a fresh jar of Skippy. And that's what this is, folks, smooth as a fresh jar of Skippy. Make sure all them chunks that you put down in there from that cream cheese has melted well, and then we're gonna add us some green chili. Now remember at the first I was telling you, get you some of them hatch roasted green chilies. Whew, they've got the flavor to them, they do but I will send you to the store and you can buy them hatch green chilies, one of them four ounce cans. Just chunk it right in there, you can. Go ahead and let's stir that up a little to where it can get incorporated. Well, it's time to season it up a little and give us some more of that great flavor. So we're gonna add us a little cumin in there we are. And if you be liking a little bite in your food, Give it some of that cayenne pepper. Now, if you're thinking this might be a little too bold for you, you can leave it out. But being the vegan duke, we like a little bite, so we're going to add some to it. But also, folks, we need to be putting a little garlic salt in there. So give it a little shake or two around there. And there is a lot of flavor coming out of that cast iron skillet right there. There is. Get it all to cook in here. We're going to just let it warm through to make sure all them seasonings have blended in well with the green chilies and the cream cheese and the onion. And mm, you could, hey, we could quit right here and just get some of them tortilla chips and make a dip right here. I could eat this, I promise. Well, we got all that going good, we do. And remember that chicken we done sh shredded up there and chopped into bite-sized pieces? Hey, it goes right in there with the rest of it. And I want you to let this warm through and mix well here. It don't take long, but you need to get some of that flavor up there on all that chicken. Make sure you get it into the green cheese and the green chilies. Now at this time would be a good time for you to reach that fork in there and just get you a taste to see if you need to adjust the heat anymore or a little more of that garlic salt. Mm. I'm just gonna go ahead and just Already? do it right now. Whoa. That there stuff is what I call good eating. We ain't gonna have to adjust nothing but the cooking time because I'm in a hurry. Well, let's put these little fellers together, but first we gotta put them together where they got something to hold them together. What is that? A flour tortilla. Yeah, remember I told you you could use one of them sacks, but don't let me catch you doing it. I'll take that rolling pin right here and I will find you. I will make the homemade tortillas. It's so easy. Shan will have you a link right there to where you can click right on it. I'm gonna give you a secret. The secret ingredient is what? Bacon grease. Ooh, folks, it makes such good homemade tortillas and you can use them on anything. But we gotta have an inch a lot of sauce too to go in here in the bottom of this to start with. So I took me one and a half cups of whipped cream, one and a half cups of sour cream, a little cumin and a little cayenne pepper, mixed it up all really well, and a can of them green chilies or some hatch roasted green chilies. And we're gonna put about a third of it in there. Make sure that it is everywhere incorporated all over the bottom. So let's get these chicken enchiladas stuffed and ready to go. About two to three tablespoons per enchilada. And you can see that we're just gonna set him over there oh so gingerly right in there. Go right back over here to the scooping process. And I could eat these tortillas and this chicken all by itself. Wouldn't have to do nothing else to it. And I think Shan made a remark that you could probably tell these was homemade because they don't look like <laughs> round out of a sack. I sometimes try to make them in the shape of states. So you never know how they're gonna turn out, but that's one surefire way you can bet that they were homemade and not right out of the sack. While we're stuffing these here enchiladas in this factory I got going on, I think it would be a good time for me to pause and tell you, ooh, Everything you need to know, the recipe and all the links will be down there listed below. But man, this is a great year, 2020. We are nearing a million subscribers. Plus, we're also having the cookbook come out March 17th. 
I'm needing y'all's help because I'd like for the two to be running right up there to the top and come out at the same time. So we ask you to share the love, share the food, share the videos, and let's get to a million. Well, the boat is loaded. We loaded it with 10 of them little enchiladas we did, and then I poured that sauce back over the top, put me a spoon, and used my concrete troweling directions to it, and smoothed it out, lathered it on there good. So now it's time to go to the fire, and let's get them cooking. Well, we got it to the trivet we did, and we're using a tall one today, because really this is an easy dish to cook, because the chicken's cooked, the tortillas is cooked. We just gotta warm all these flavors back through, soften them enchiladas up just a little. So light heat on the bottom, pretty heavy on top. You just wanna make sure that you keep an eye. I wanna see it sort of simmer up through there and everything get to blending well. Won't take long, about 15 minutes. That melted cheese is smelling some of that goodness it is. Now when you're seeing me cooking this, I put my hand right down there over the top of that Dutch oven lid. And folks, if you can hold it there a hand distance away for more than five seconds, them coals ain't doing you much good. Them there had sort of ashed out, so you see me shake it off the lid there, put it back on, get me some fresh heat, put it on top. Now also you see me take it plumb off the bottom because all that sauce is just keep bubbling back up through there. You don't wanna burn that in the bottom because remember what it's got in it that burns and scorches really well? Milk, yeah. Now. I took the lid off about five minutes before it got plumb done cooking, and how say I know that, you say? Well, I reached down there and I felt to them tortillas that's good and soft, so I got me about a cup of that mozzarella cheese and I just sprinkled her all on top of there. You can use whatever cheese you be having desire to put on there, but I do like it with the mozzarella. It brings such a good cheesy taste to that. We're going to let this cool till we can get it out of there, and mm, it is going to be good. Three of them on there? Yep. That's a plate just my size. Now, I'm gonna reach down in there. Mm. There is a lot of goodness going on inside of there with that cream cheese and that chicken and them green chilies. Mm, mm, mm. Oh my gosh, Big. How is it for chicken? Folks, y'all know I do love some beef, but that right there, will make you want to be the smoothest person in the world. That cheese is silky smooth as it melts. Make me want to do the moonwalk backwards, forwards, break down, get a low, and namaste, and a warrior pose even. You never know. <laughs> well, we hope you enjoyed this today because me and the vegan duke sure did. And Shan said she even enjoyed because she even did get a bite while y'all wasn't watching. Y'all been chastising me for a long time thinking she don't never get to eat. Folks, y'all don't know what goes on when the camera ain't watching, I promise you. Recipe, everything you need will be listed right down there in the little link below. And hey, I gotta give a special shout out to two young cooks that have really touched my heart. We have so many families that watch, but when you can get all the children involved in it and bring them in there, Anthony and William, mm, y'all touch my heart with your emails and your little pictures that you drew for me. Makes my day, it does. You keep cooking, keep the fire hot. Now folks, I'm asking you, hey, whether you're a new viewer, you're an old viewer, be sure and keep up with this year because man, it is busy. We're gonna have a book tour we are. And as always, 
I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and all our veterans who have kept us safe in this old country no matter where they be, and that old flag will be flying above this wagon. It will. We salute you and God bless you each and every one. Stay safe. The rest of y'all, new subscriber, old subscriber, hey, I need you to do the same thing. Share, like, and subscribe. God bless you each and every one, and I'll see you down the hatch green chili cream cheese chicken enchilada trail. Well, I'll stop on it. That'll happen, it will. Oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> Woo.